have, uh, I'm very happy to introduce Elaine. I know she's going to kick off uh, the seminar series uh, with the, and, and she's going to tell us about a finite presentation of the HL fundamental group. Okay, so thank you very much. It's nice to see you all, if I may say so. And uh, it's a small lecture on a, on a small result, uh, which uh, somehow came as a surprise because uh, I wasn't sure it would be correct. I mean, I wasn't sure when one should expect uh, this to be true. So uh, let me explain uh, uh, the motivation, so uh, introduction. And please, if you cannot read or if uh, my English is too distorted, then maybe you just stop me, it's easier. So uh, if we have uh, X, which is smooth, uh, let's uh, connect it, because we are going to study fundamental groups, so everything is connected, and in fact, uh, geometrically connected. Uh, over C, so there is no such discussion, and uh, quasi-projective. Then uh, we know that if we look at the underlying manifold of its complex point, this is homotopy equivalent to um, CW, a finite CW complex. And then basically by the definition of a finite CW complex, it implies that the topological fundamental group of this uh, manifold here is finitely presented. So I'm going to abbreviate here, uh, finitely presented by FP. I hope it doesn't uh, create any confusion. And what does that mean? This is a classical definition. It means that the group in question here is a quotient of a free group in finitely many letters in such a way that when we look at the kernel of this uh, generation of this uh, finitely generated group, then the kernel here is finitely generated, I abbreviate with FG, as a normal subgroup. This means that uh, we can write this R bar here as a um, as a group which is finitely generated and from it, the normalization, the, 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 norm, the normal subgroup, which is spanned by it in this free group. Okay, so that's a classical definition. And this implies, because here we do a seminar on characteristic P geometry and also p geometry. So I proceed slowly towards this direction. This implies by the Riemann existence theorem this implies that the uh, etal fundamental group so let me just write pi one etal of x viewed as a scheme over c it is also finitely presented now as a profinite group And, uh, and this definition here is, so to speak, uh, mimicking the definition in the uh, category of abstract groups. Uh, this means that uh, this profinite group here is a quotient of the profinite completion of a free group uh, in uh, finitely many letters with a kernel here, let me denote it by R here. So this kernel is uh, also a profinite group and it is uh, finitely generated as a normal profinite group. This means that, uh, in fact, there is a discrete uh, group uh, which is finitely generated, uh, which uh, maps to R. And uh, so it's finitely generated. And now if we take the profinite group, uh, which is normal, which is spanned by this one, this is precisely R. Okay, so this is a very uh, classical uh, theorem. At the same time, uh, Grothendieck is telling us that if we take any field, let's say F inside of C, which is uh, algebraically closed, then uh, we have best change and uh, on which, uh, let's say on which, uh, maybe I should say F bar here, 
and f, f finite tap over q and x defined over f. Then the uh, etal fundamental group of uh, x over f bar, so the best change map here is an isomorphism. So uh, this is a very classical theorem. And uh, he's also telling us that uh, because X is defined over uh, a field of finite type, in fact, is defined over a ring of finite type. So now over Z. So uh, where X itself has a model over E. And once we are in this situation, then uh, looking at a complex point of spec A, like we have written here, so we have, let's say, A inside of F, then uh, so uh, C becomes a complex, uh, complex generic point of A, then C is the specialization homomorphism from pi one of X, uh, let's say over C, via this identification here, to pi one of X, and here, let me write here F P bar, where uh, p bar here, spec of f p bar to spec of a is a good, good place. Good place for the model of x over a, that means it has a good uh, generation. So uh, Grotentix defines this. This is not difficult to define it. Uh, I'm assuming here uh, that x is proper. So then it's not difficult to define because uh, what we do is that we complete A uh, around uh, this uh, close point here, spec of FP bar. And then because the scheme is proper for the base, one has a best change theorem also due to Grothendieck that the fundamental group of X over FP bar is the same as the fundamental group of X by contraction of the, of the tube, so to speak, of X over, a, over uh, so completion of A at the close point here. So uh, then he's telling us that this is subjective. This is also not too difficult. And, uh, but uh, what is uh, very beautiful in the theory is that if we look here at the specialization homomorphism and we look at it only at the level of the pro P prime completion. So that means the um, pro finite completion by groups the order of which is prime to P, then this specialization homomorphism here realizes an isomorphism. So uh, now this group here uh, by uh, the introduction we had is uh, finitely presented as a profinite group it does not immediately imply that uh, its pro P prime completion is also finitely presented, but in fact, it is true. And it's going to come out as, a, so to speak, as a very, very easy corollary of the method we are going to use later on. So this is also finitely presented. So this one is finitely presented. So uh, it's a very uh, natural question here. or if you like problem, but let's say question, is whether uh, this, uh, we have here uh, a square, there is one and three on which we know nothing, of course, because uh, we, we know it's finitely generated because it is um, covered by a group which itself is finitely generated as a provinal group. But uh, we ask the question whether pi one of X over FP bar is finitely presented. And, uh, and then uh, we can make here, from here we can make two, so to speak, remarks. The first remark is that what I have written here uh, could be uh, generalized, so the same. And let me write here in quotation mark for, uh, on the topological side here, pi one of C, where X now is no longer proper, it's just quasi-projective. And uh, on the arithmetic side here, uh, one has to replace the uh, specialization homomorphism is defined with values in the TEM fundamental group, so C stands for TEM. And uh, 
and uh, I'm going to explain. So in fact, uh, I am uh, I am a little bit loose here because one needs here uh, a good model. And a good model here, we are not going to talk on this, so I'm very fast here. Good model means that uh, we compactify, we take a good compactification of X over A, let's say, or over uh, shrinking of A. And then we specialize at a place where not only X had good has good reduction, but also this uh, a compactification has good reductions. That means we have a relative normal crossing divisors. And under these conditions, this is a case that the specialization homomorphism here is defined with values in the term fundamental group and is surjective. And then we have the same theorem here. So that means it equates here the P prime part, the P prime completion, And then we can ask the same question. So this is uh, one generalization here is that uh, we can replace here proper, let's say do, uh, by a quasi projective. And uh, the, uh, the second thing, and this is more serious. So now I discuss this one, this generalization uh, is that uh, in general, uh, there is no, as we know, there is no lift in general. And then we can, uh, we can ask the abstract question, and we are going to talk only on this. So this square, so to speak, is a motivation for the abstract question, even though even on the square, there is no way to answer the question I was asking. More generally, the abstract question is whether the 10 fundamental group here is finitely presented as a uh, profinite group under the, at least under the assumption that we have a good compactification. But now we are really in characteristic P, so let's say over uh, FP bar or over any algebraically closed field of characteristic P. So this is a good compactification. So I hope the, the motivation is clear. Uh, before I proceed, let me explain what TEM means. Sorry, if I may have a question. Yeah, yeah, please go. What about the, just the non tame Pi one, the general pi one in positive. But there's no, ah, if we come from characteristic zero, there is no specialization map. And if we take the whole fundamental groups, the non term fundamental groups, then it is not even finitely generated. Even if you are proper. I guess we... oh, no, no, but if you are proper, it's always 10. OK, right. OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. So think of A1. This is uh, a Bianca's conjecture. It's really huge. It's not even finitely presented. Is that OK? So and, uh, and this is good you ask this question. Thank you very much, because now I explain what is TEM. I could have uh, started with this. But uh, so wh what is the uh, TEM fundamental group here? So we assume for simplicity, x is uh, smooth. But uh, I could do the same blah, blah for x normal. But uh, I. Uh, our talk is for x moose here. So uh, by the very definition, it's a sub Galois category of the whole finite et al category. So it's a quotient of the fundamental group here. And it is defined here as follows. We say that the cover here, x over uh, y over x, so uh, finite et al uh, is tem if and only if for any curve here, so curve means DVR, I just say curve here, then uh, when we pull back here uh, this diagram, then this map here is 10. So now I shift it. This definition, by the way, is due to Moritz Kertz and Alexander Schmidt. But uh, we will see that this definition doesn't come from the sky because it, co it uh, agrees with Grothendieck's initial definition in a good case. And uh, what does that mean for, the, uh, for a cover of curves of DVRs to be 10? 
this is now the definition of ser. So we have a DVR inside of another DVR, and this is finite. Then we say the system, if and only if, uh, two things happen. First, the ramification index is prime to P. P was fixed here in the discussion. Uh, it was over FP bar. And the, oh, oh sorry. And, uh, and the second condition is that uh, in case uh, we do uh, geometry here over uh, non-perfect field, then uh, the residue field extension is uh, separable. And uh, this beautiful definition here, which is uh, uh, inspired by uh, Dolin's uh, fundamental theorem saying that a D module is uh, regular singular if in, in uh, over the field of complex numbers, if and only if it is regular singular on all curves. So that, so to speak, the point of this theorem was shown by uh, Kertz and Schmidt to be equivalent to the definition of Grothendieck and Moore. In case X has a good compactification. And what is the definition of Grothendieck and Moore in case X has a good compactification? Then we enter the, the world of Coomer theory. Uh, this is saying that's the definition of Grothendieck and Moore, and they say themselves in the book that uh, they give this definition, which is a good definition in case we have a good compactification. But if we didn't, this would be certainly the wrong definition. They, they say themselves. And, uh, and the definition they give is that uh, a cover here y over x, which is finite et al, is stem if and only if locally on x, this is dominated by a Coomer cover. Yeah, that's it. If and only if locally it's dominated by a Coomer cover. cover. And uh, Coomer means, uh, we know what is Coomer, it's Galois with, uh, with Galois group uh, mu n, where n now is prime to p. Okay, so I think we have uh, all the definitions here, and uh, that would be the time to ask whether on the motivation and on the definition there is a question. Yeah, Before, so yeah. Th this definition of pain, yes. uh, do, do you really require the whole curve map to X or only its fraction field? Because Y to X is finite et al, right? So if, if the whole DVR maps into it, then the YC okay. over C is finite et al. Uh, yeah, you're right. I should write uh, because I have written DVR. You are completely right. It's a, it's a serious objection. I should say curve minus um, uh, maybe hundred curve. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let me write. Let me write DVR, and now let me write fraction of DVR. And thank you very much for the objections here. Another objection. It's okay. So thank you very much. Okay, so now, now I'm uh, in the position to write the theorem. So in fact, uh, we have four theorem, but there is uh, one which is more important and I'm going to write it one. So I should insist here that uh, this is joint work with uh, Mark Schusterman with um, Benjamin Pierce um, a postdoc in uh, Harvard and uh, my friend Shinivas from Data Institute here. So the CRM one here is that, uh, so uh, we are here over uh, K algebraic algos of And uh, we are quasi-projective and we assume here, and in fact, uh, we cannot do without quasi-projective. I mean, if it was just a scheme, even smooth, uh, we could not do it. Uh, because we will use some uh, left shed theorem, I'm going to explain. Uh, in X bar here, so we assume we have a good compactification. Uh, 
And uh, under this assumption, then we prove that the term fundamental group of X is finitely presented as a profinite group. So then uh, there are um, pieces of the CRM uh, which can be uh, refined. So for example, if we assume X has dimension one, so we have a curve. So clearly we have a good compactification because we have a perfect field, even algebraically closed here. And um, then uh, uh, more is true in this case, the term fundamental group is a profinite projective group. So I'm not going to talk on this, but projective means projective in the category of profinite um, uh, groups. So uh, this is quite uh, handy, in fact. It has some few uh, little corollaries. But let me give a, a corollary here of CRM1 plus of the method we use to prove the CRM here. Uh, namely, if we, uh, because I mean, to be over an algebraically close, of course, an important information, but it's even better if we are able to deal with K uh, perfect and, uh, and uh, not, alge not uh, algebraically closed. So that we cannot have a CRM in general, because for example, if X was spec K, and at the end of the day, then it would be even be proper. So we will talk on the fundamental group. So we would talk on the Galois group. So at the end of the day, we would ask whether the Galois group of any perfect field is finitely presented. That is uh, certainly not correct. But uh, so we have to assume this. So assume that uh, the Galois group of K is uh, finitely presented. And then the corollary of the theorem here is that pi one of X, the term pi one here, under the assumption that we have a good compactification is also finitely presented. And uh, corollary of uh, two here is that, uh, and I'm not going to talk on this, we can generalize, uh, I mean, generalize the, um, the theorems here. Let me write like this. If we allow more ramification, so more than, more than term ramification, and more, of course, we have to control a lot. And the way we control is well at Rinfeld. So we fix y over x, it's fixed forever, h, which is finite et al. And then we are looking at the covers of z, finite et al covers of z, which pull back to y here become tem. And then one need, so that defines a, a certain H fundamental group, which depends on H. So this definition is inspired by uh, Drinfeld's work. I don't give the extra condition and so forth. And at the end of the day, we can generalize uh, the, uh, the discussion here on curves from the term fundamental group uh, to this uh, fundamental group with very uh, strict uh, boundedness of uh, ramification here. So let me make uh, two remarks here. Before, uh, sorry, I... can I ask a question? Yeah, so, yeah, go. About theorem two, uh, is there like any assumption that x bar x is affine? No, x is projective. I, uh, I forgot. Thank you very much for uh, the correction. Okay. And projective means projective in the category of all groups, uh, profinite groups. No, no, x. The, the curve is projective. No, no, sorry, but in the conclusion, pi t. Uh, the conclusion uh, is uh, precisely what you say here. Uh -huh. So, I mean, uh, it, it's, a, it's a fan, I mean, it has cohomological dimension one. Maybe I should say that. It's equivalent to that. But then I should define cohomological uh, dimension, and I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to do something very similar. 
Sorry, I'm still confused. Like, why, why, why doesn't H2 of the curve cause a problem? Uh, no. Um. Yeah, maybe the curve is that fine. Uh, let me think. No, no, it has to be free, like uh, like in characteristic zero. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so then affine. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you very much, Bargava. Uh, I was not in it. Yeah. Thank you very much. This is wrong here. In fact, I had prepared, but um, I was telling you that for a curve we have a good compactification. So uh, sorry. So, and thank you very much for the correction. I find smooth here. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Another mistake here? No, okay, let's hope. I can tell you theorem one has no mistake. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much, Bagab. And thank you very much, uh, uh, Jakub, for the correction before uh, with the DVRs and the field of fraction. So now let me make two remarks here. Uh, the first one is that um, if you look, uh, the theorem one is going to imply that the pro, pro, oh shit, pro p prime completion of x is also finitely presented. But uh, this, uh, uh, I mean, the pro p prime completion of the term fundamental group is the same by the very definition of the term fundamental group is the same as the pro p prime completion of x itself. And, uh, and this, in fact, is a theorem uh, which is uh, 40 or 50 years old uh, by Michel Renault, Madame Renault. And uh, in case we have uh, uh, good, um, uh, we have resolution of singularities, and, uh, and then later on, Fabrice or Gugoso, I mean, the moment we had um, alteration, then uh, Fabrice or Gugoso, um, I mean, uh, wrote an article to explain that the proof of Michel Renault applies also for alterations. And uh, here, let me make a remark here, which is quite uh, crucial is that uh, if we have an alteration, that means uh, here, this is a proper map, and uh, assume Y uh, uh, is smooth and has a good uh, compactification, then uh, we would like to reduce the statement for X to the statement for Y. This we can do under one assumption, we know that because uh, Y is uh, proper plus uh, subjective and subjective also in the sense of a best change over Y, then uh, we know that we have etal descent. But precisely because of what I explained with the Drinfeld's notion of um, of ramification bounded by uh, by some morphism, then uh, uh, we have eta descent for pi one, for pi one of p prime, but not for pi one tem, because uh, we have tem covers of y perhaps, which uh, might come. I mean, if a tem cover from y is uh, comes from x it is not said that it comes from a time cover from, uh, of X. And consequently, the method of proofs of SG1 from uh, Michel Renault and uh, Orgo Gozo, they cannot be applied at all. We cannot even start to prove the CRM here for the term fundamental group in general. I mean, uh, you could also say uh, a philosophical sentence here that the difference between the term fundamental group and the uh, P prime completion of the whole fundamental group is a big mystery. We don't really master uh, what is the kernel of, uh, of this map here. Okay, so those were the remarks. And once I have, 
I have made those remarks. Let me explain now the method of proof. And uh, the method of proof here relies on a theorem of Lubotsky, which uh, before I, uh, I explain what the theorem says, has been rediscovered, so to speak, by Mark. Who prior to our work together, proved precisely using Lubotsky theorem that, uh, and now, um, Barca, if you will understand why I gave you a wrong answer to your question, he proved that if X is smooth projective curve over a finite field, then it's, uh, uh, what did he show? Uh, now I am confused. Yeah, it's a fundamental group here has is finitely presented, but more. And now because we have a finite field here, yes, that's really the arithmetic fundamental group. And uh, then it has the same number of generators than the number of relations. So this is a very uh, beautiful theorem here. And um, so, which is due to Mark, and uh, which he proved using the theorem of Lubotsky, which is going to be the cornerstone of our proof. So, once I have said that, let me say what is the theorem of um, Alex, Alex Lubotsky. It's a general theorem which says that if G is a profinite group, so profinite, a finitely generated group. So we need this condition here. Then uh, it's an if and only if condition. Then G is finitely presented. If and only if, and the following happens. And uh, because I'm scared not to have enough room here, let me write here, I apologize. If and only if the following happens for any prime number L, any, M, which is a linear representation of E, so any R, I should say, and any M, which is a linear representation of G with values in the prime field uh, FL, then uh, maybe my quantifiers are not yet correct. So let me write here. Uh, maybe I'll write it uh, in white here because that's the most important thing. There is, a, there is a constant here which is positive. So you can take a real number, but you can, uh, because it's a constant, you can also take uh, some integer if you like. So there is a constant such that for all prime numbers, for all R, for all linear representations with values in GLR FL, then the dimension of H2GFL. So first, this is, um, this is an FL uh, vector space by the very definition of the cohomology. So we can look at its dimension over FL. And then it is finite. I mean, it's not obvious at all that it is finite, but more is true, it grows It grows linearly in R. I mean, we have this constant here, and it grows linearly in R. So you see uh, the, the sorry. So yeah. the coefficients be m rather than fl. Yeah, m. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. M. Ah. So you see, there, yeah, thank you very much for the correction. So you see, there are um, 
it's a it's a quite a fascinating theorem. Of course, here it has a fascinating um, uh, um, criterion. I mean, M has rank R here, and uh, and the theorem is telling you that uh, whatever a fail, I mean, it's a sort of motivic theorem because it's telling you that uh, you can you can control this finite uh, presentation here by a cohomological condition which does not depend on the characteristic of the local system. I mean, let me call it a local system here because we are going to apply it to G being the fundamental group of a variety or the term fundamental group of a variety. And then you can think of this cohomology as being a cohomology, the group cohomology with values in the local system, if you prefer. So that's, um, that's a criterion. And now uh, let me tell you how one proves theorem one. So, uh, of course, uh, given the criterion of uh, Alex Lubotsky, there are two cases to consider. So we have our X here, which has good compactification, but for the first part of the discussion, we will not need this good compactification here. And uh, this is smooth. For the first part, we don't need smooth, but it doesn't really matter. So there is, a, and because we are in characteristic P here, then clearly there will be a discrepancy between the proof of our FL, which is going to be, so to speak, in the SG uh, style, not one, but more seven style, and uh, the uh, F being FP, which is going to be, in fact, uh, quite a new proof. So let me first explain the first part here. What time is it, by the way? We, I have 20 minutes. So, uh, so uh, I explain the first part here. I assume uh, uh, we are over L here. And uh, we consider here uh, an exact sequence. Here we have the fundamental group I just abbreviated by pi here. And we have its stem uh, quotient here. And uh, then we have a kernel here. Uh, K. I, I mean, K just defines the kernel. So uh, we are interested in representation of these groups here. When we pull uh, such a representation back to K, it is a trivial representation. And the first thing to uh, realize is that, in fact, uh, the K cohomology of FL, so because M becomes trivial on K, so I am. Uh, I'm just looking at FL to the power K with trivial, uh, represent, uh, trivial uh, action of K here, then this is zero. So in fact, uh, I don't discuss that, but this is not too hard uh, to understand. Uh, is because uh, I mean K by the very, well, I, I don't discuss it. It is discussed basically in uh, the book of uh, Grotendieck Moore. And, um, the, uh, and um, in fact, uh, Marco da Dezio De had given me the, the reference here uh, to this. So this is basically a classical uh, point here. So uh, if you apply the whole CR spectral sequence, as I said, I mean, this part is, uh, uses uh, classical tools. If you apply the Rothschild CR spectral sequence, because the H1 here dies, one obtains that H2 pi t, which is what we are interested in, with values in M, injects into H2 pi with values in M. But now, by the very definition, the universal cover kills any um, local system. And it is always the case that this uh, kills uh, H1 of any local system, I apologize. And, uh, and consequently, again, by a Horschild spectral sequence going all the way up to the whole uh, universal cover, this part here, there is always a map here to H2XM. So now we do really a uh, geometry, no longer groups, uh, group theory, group cohomology theory. And this map here is always injective. So uh, one sees immediately here, without much uh, thinking, that this group is always finite dimensional. So that's already a first uh, information. But of course, the information is much too coarse. 
but uh, we can refine it in an easy way like this. So I uh, just say uh, quite rapidly is that uh, we can, uh, as we discussed already, we can take an alteration here with a good compactification. But in fact, this alteration, we can also, uh, if we use a very modern technology going through Gaber and then uh, Mihai Tiomkin, then uh, we can assume that uh, this is really pro, uh, it's a peak over. So, I mean, the, the, the open over which uh, the map is, uh, is finite uh, is, um, is of order a power of P. And this implies immediately that H2 of X, uh, H2 of X, uh, uh, what did I want to say here? Uh, this implies immediately that, in fact, uh, we can do it uh, with, uh, yeah, I'm sorry here. So uh, maybe uh, before I, I do all those details here. Let me just write here that uh, this gives a reduction to y. That means uh, to x with a good model. And uh, once we are here, so we have a good model here, a good compactification. And now we have a, a theorem which I had proven not so long ago with uh, Lars Skindler who meanwhile works for the um, Minister of Interior, uh, German Minister of Interior. So uh, we prove that uh, we have the full package of uh, Lefschetz theorems for the 10 fundamental group under the assumption that we have a good compactification like this. So, um, so, okay, so, so we may assume uh, without loss of generality, we may assume that the dimension of X is two. And uh, now we use uh, purity. We may even assume that X is affine. And why is this? Because uh, we can remove from X a smooth divisor a smooth sample divisor, which is in good position with respect to infinity in such a way that this is affine. And uh, then we have uh, uh, this cohomology here, receive, uh, receive this cohomology and by purity here, purity à la Gaber, uh, then it receives this cohomology here. So now we are looking at H0 of a local system on a smooth variety. This dimension is at most R. So we are reduced to the case where X is affine. So without loss of generality, X is affine. And now using, uh, we, there are two things one can use. One can use that the other characteristic of M on X affine. Now with Artin vanishing, as I said, it's really uh, SGA in uh, all its uh, brilliance here. Uh, without in vanishing, this is just H0 minus H1 plus H2. There is nothing beyond. Now this H0 here by the very definition, the dimension is at most R. So, uh, so uh, on the other hand, by the fundamental theorem of the line, It's, which is telling us that the other characteristic of a TEM local system here is the same as R time R was a rank, the other characteristic of the trivial local system. Then uh, uh, all we have to control here, we have to control H1. But now, if you remember how to define a co-cycle for H1, a co-cycle for H1 is, uh, so let me write a co-cycle and here, because we do a profinite group is, uh, is a continuous uh, co-cycle, but it doesn't really matter because the values in, is in M. So M is uh, finite, so uh, in fact, it's automatic, but it doesn't matter. So uh, a co-cycle is known 
by the co-boundary condition, by the co-boundary relations, is known by its value, by its value on generators. And uh, when we do profinite uh, theory on the topological uh, generators of, of, uh, of the group. So, uh, because I forgot to say the H1 here, this is really H1 of pi t here. So, um, so, uh, so consequently it goes linearly in R. Linear growth, and that finishes the proof. So, uh, and uh, in addition, it finishes the proof because uh, the uh, here the constant which comes up is just depending on the number of generators of H one uh, of uh, of the abelian quotient of uh, of the ten fundamental group, and um, and here. The solar characteristic here, one has to argue that the solar characteristic, what is written one here is FL. And the solar characteristic does not depend on the L here. It's already a motivic information, which is not too hard to, uh, to compute, but uh, this is already a piece of information. And uh, that terminates the proof here for P not equal to L. So now we start discussing the case where the local system is defined over FP. And this is, you can, uh, uh, by the way, realize here that uh, this computation, which is here, uh, does not request here the remark. Uh, we could do the same computation only under the assumption that X is normal because it's a very uh, flexible computation. The main point is uh, the Young theorem. I mean, the modern uh, version of the Young theorem, and and the rest is uh, basically standard dévisage. And at the end, the only thing which is going really to depend on L a priori is the solar characteristic, but it does not. So now we go to uh, FP, where the situation is really different. So, for example, the first question, which is absolutely um, we spend quite a long time here. The first question, which is not obvious, is, is even, we are not talking on linear bond here, is even that finite? I mean, this is not clear because uh, we do not control the map from here to here. I mean, there is, of course, this map exists, but uh, unlike the case where M is a local system defined over FL, L not equal to P, we cannot conclude immediately that uh, this map is injective. And uh, because we cannot conclude that this map is injective and we are just dealing with the fundamental group, so we have no devisage, no localization sequence, no nothing, even this simple question whether this group is finite is not immediate to answer. So that's going to be part of the, of the information. So uh, here is the way we proceed. So uh, the first thing is that uh, by the very, so the, the main theorem, I mean, the first, the, here, uh, in order to prove the theorem, uh, the, the proof is going to be subdivided into uh, two parts, uh, which are completely foreign to each other. But uh, the, the, uh, the part of the proof which is, uh, which is more original in some sense is the first part I'm going to talk about now, because at least I will have maybe more time to, to spend on this. The second part is more uh, classical geometry, but now really classical geometry, not SGA. So uh, the theorem here, which is behind, is like this. So let me write it uh, slowly. So assume we have a good compactification here. And again, let us assume that we are over a field here of characteristic P, which is algebraically closed. Then this group here of which we want to bond the size uh, and 
is a, a subgroup here of the following group. And I have now I, I will have to define the map here, but uh, it's going to land in H2 X bar. X bar was a good compactification here with values in J lower star of M. And now I have to get out from this terminology of uh, group representations and really think of it as a local system. So that means the map uh, on which I was uh, asking a question here, in fact, uh, we say that this map factors who, I mean, there's an obvious map from here to here. And, uh, and then we say it factors, there it is injective, and that's enough already to conclude that this is finite, because this is proper, it's even projective. So the finiteness is going to be um, performed like this. And uh, you will see what time is it? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, so then maybe I should speed up. Uh, you, I will talk only on this part here. And this is the part where we really need the good compactification, otherwise we can do it. So uh, maybe I should, uh, I should explain here. So first by, uh, by the, so the proof here. So let me at least finish this proof here. By the very definition, pi t of m is uh, by definition that's the uh, inductive system here over all normal subgroup of pi t, which are uh, open and normal of h2 of uh, g u and then uh, m u. And uh, what is this notation here when u is uh, normal? So that induces here a Galois cover with group G mod U, which I have abbreviated by GU, and uh, MU here, that's the U invariance of M. So that's a standard uh, way to compute uh, cohomology. So we have to understand this. So associated to this uh, tower of use here, we have a, a tower of covers. And now we make use of the fact that we have a good compactification, uh, we take some compactification, in our case, it's going to be good. And we can uh, complete this uh, square here uh, by looking at the normalization of X bar in the function field of XU. So that's a standard, uh, standard, uh, um, so, uh, standard situation. We call it HU and HU bar here. And now uh, we observe that here we have uh, M, uh, we, we have uh, M U here. I can take the U invariance here. So this embedding was denoted by J. Let me denote this embedding by J U. So now it is a case that uh, the Galois group here, G U acts on the cover, but it acts also on the normalization of the compactification because it's normal. So here we have an action of GU. But not only uh, geometrically like this, we also have an action of GU on the constructible sheaf, which is here. So it has also an action of GU. Consequently, one can consider uh, Grothendieck's uh, uh, mixed uh, theory of uh, cohomology, I mean, mixed theory cohomology with action of a group. So there is a spectral sequence, which looks like this. I mean, the existence of the spectral sequence has, has been proved by uh, Suva in this situation, because one has to check some uh, finiteness condition, which are uh, easily verified in this case here. So we have uh, uh, this, uh, group here. So that's uh, the group cohomology with values in the geometric cohomology of this uh, um, of this constructible shift here on which GU acts and consequently acts on the cohomology. So there is a need to spectral sequence here, which converges to H A plus B, XU bar, GU, GU, MU. So uh, that's the first point here. The second point is that uh, it is uh, by looking at uh, all the system of U, the tower of U, which is above the level which trivializes M, 
So let me write here care of phi t with values in GL m. Let me change slightly the notations here. Then uh, we can compute easily that in fact, uh, uh, this, this um, mixed cohomology here is the same as J lower star of M. So that is, that is easy. And now comes the, the crux of the, of the proof here. I mean, of this part of the proof is that uh, Moritz, together with Alexander Schmidt, they prove a very uh, beautiful theorem. They prove that uh, in the, under the assumption that, that we have a good compactification, then the 10 tower is not only 10 in the general sense, which I explained at the beginning of the lecture, but is in fact a numerically 10. And what does that mean numerically 10? It means the following that for each cover like this, you remember it was Galois, temly ramified at infinity, down, uh, we have the situation here. So uh, we can look for any point, uh, for any close, uh, close or not close, any point of x bar u minus x, we can look inside of gu at the stabilizer of y. So of course, uh, because this group is finite, this group is finite. I mean, uh, here I haven't said anything. But the theorem of Moritz and Alexander is that in fact, this group has order prime to P. So, uh, it's a, so um, in the whole tower, and this in turn imply via an argument essentially due to Grothendieck that the higher direct images of this edge bar uh, this mixed edge bar here are zero. I, I don't do the argument. I mean, it's essentially an argument of Grothendieck. And this implies that, in fact, uh, we obtain uh, now an exact sequence that, uh, I mean, I'm just uh, translating now that we have an E2 uh, spectral sequence. I speed up and then I, I stop here. Uh, we obtain here this H2. And then uh, we have here uh, this H2 uh, GU MU. And you remember that uh, as we look, uh, as we look at the limit uh, the direct limit over u here, it's going to compute precisely what we want. And uh, so forget this here. I mean, uh, step by step, but we have a tower here. And then we have a kernel here, which is H1. Now I, I had uh, made um, no, uh, notices somewhere, which are no longer here. H1 over x bar u. I'm sorry, it, I hope it's still uh, readable. J, U, M, U, and the whole stuff here invariant under G, U. So we obtain an exact sequence like this, which is compatible with the whole inductive system of cohomology, or if you like, with the whole tower. And now I had, I had told you the theorem is that this is injective in the system. So uh, we have to show that this is zero. And how is that zero? It's because in the system here, this is zero. And why is that? And I stop here, it's nearly time. It's because M here was a TEM system. So we can take Q, which is smaller, which is in the, inside of the kernel of the um, uh, representation of the TEM fundamental group, which defines M. Then over there, above this level, M becomes trivial. So, uh, so this was you here, I apologize. So, um, so uh, you no longer acts on M, 
So, uh, so this uh, J Euro star becomes just a trivial shift. Oh, shit. I apologize. So we had here H1 X bar J U M U. I apologize. So for, for U small enough, this becomes just FP to the power R for U small enough. And uh, on X bar, X bar U. But now, um, see, we, we are in the tower which, uh, which computes the 10 fundamental group of X. So uh, this tower maps to the tower of X bar. And uh, then uh, this is going to kill this cohomology in the tower. So this map is zero. And consequently, we, we obtain here. And here I forgot to put a bar here, I apologize. And that shows the CRM. And that's the main part of the argument, uh, which is of a uh, different style. And once we are there, then I said just in word. So um, we are, we can, we can assume because our assumptions that we have a good compactification, we apply uh, the CRM with Lars Kindler uh, that we have left sheds. So we can assume that X is a surface. And now, we do an Artin Schreier theory for all the M's we show up on this surface. And um, we have to prove essentially, I just say something which is not precise enough, but which gives a flavor. The uh, coherent shift, which is in the background, which is associated to this local system, becomes a vector bundle on this smooth compactified surface which is semi-stable of degree zero. And uh, once we are there, then uh, we have, so to speak, bounded the problem and uh, we can show that uh, the cohomology, the H2 we are interested in, is going to grow uh, just, like the, just like the rank. Because we don't no longer have to find any constant now because, uh, yeah, it's going to, to grow just like the rank. So I stop here and I thank you for your attention. Um, great, thank you very much. Are there any questions? Sorry, so actually I had a stupid question. I'm just confused about something basic. So. This J lower star of M, uh, let's just say M is FP, the constant sheaf. Then J lower star of M, kind of the stocks are infinite dimensional, right? And, 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 um, J lower star of M, the stocks are infinite dimensional. No, no, J lower star of M, I mean, you are just looking at sections here. So. Uh... Oh, sorry, it's not our J lower star. Okay. No, no, it's not our jello. And I mean, that's a, it's a, it's a proof there is no room. I mean, uh, you cannot, because uh, thank you for your question, because uh, you have to kill this higher cohomology before. And uh, that is done uh, by, uh, by observing that uh, because you have this normal uh, compactification uh, assumption, then uh, you have this um, numerically term uh, mm -hmm. situation which kills precisely the kind of annoyance you uh, you are talking about. If we were looking at R1 J lower star of FP, this would be awful. Mm -hmm. So you have to eliminate that from the very beginning. And, uh, and uh, you don't do it on R1 J lower star P, you do it on this R1 H I mean, where you mix a group. I mean, there's not much room here to, uh, to check the proof here. But uh, nonetheless, uh, uh, I come back to your question. I mean, I answer the question, but uh, it gives me the opportunity to say one more word. It's because this Jello star of FP, I mean, after Jello star of M, after certain levels, this is Jello uh, star of MP. And now you are in this uh, TEM tower, and in particular, uh, you kill this cohomology by, by the tower because uh, it extends to the, to the whole variety and consequently the system. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah.
Okay, well, I mean, if there are no further questions, let's let's thank Elaine again. Um, and then I think we have a talk every day this week. Is that right, Carl?